Soludo directs repeat of online teachers' recruitment examination. Education Commissioner Choma Ude announces date for repeat of online exam for teachers. Federal government moves to end export rejection in Europe and other parts of the world. Lebanese army arrests 64 people trying to sail to Europe. Before the news in details, here is a special message. Governor Chukwu Masaludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. Good morning and welcome to the news. My name is Nonye Mokoye. In line with his objective of ensuring transparency and fairness to all, Anambra State Governor Professor Charles Chukwuma Soludo, CFR, has directed a repeat of the online recruitment exam for teachers in Anambra State. A release signed by Chief Press Secretary to the Governor, Mr. Christian Aburime, said, Governor Saludo has therefore graciously directed the Honorable Commissioner for Education, Professor Ngozi Chomaude, to conduct a repeat of the exercise to make up for the shortfall in the Saturday, 4th of June, preliminary teachers' recruitment examination. We have details. The release also stated that Governor Saludo further directed that all expenses for the test will be covered by the government. Recall that teachers' recruitment examinations were held in the state on Saturday, June 4, 2022. The test was conducted in line with the resolve of Professor Saludo and his administration for strengthening and repositioning the education sector in the state. It tallies with the conviction of the governor that education remains a veritable equipment for enhanced living and and building a better society. To ensure transparency in the exercise, steps were taken by the Ministry of Education charged with the responsibility. The ministry received over 40,000 applications and listed about 31,800 qualified applicants after reviews. Applicants considered too old for civil service, graduate without NYAC discharge certificates or exemption later, and other deficiencies were disqualified. Against the proposed 5,000 qualified Qualified applicants to be shortlisted for CBT exam, the governor directed that all the over 31,000 listed applicants should be given equal chance to participate in the preliminary online exam before shortlisting the successful applicants for second CBT exam. Other measures necessary to attain reliability and credibility of the tests were taken. There were, however, reported mix-up arising from the online examination site that were not intended. It is in a bid to make up and ensure that all eligible candidates are carried along that the governor has approved a repeat of the exercise. He assures Ndianambra their interests will be protected at all time by his administration. In line with state government objective of ensuring transparency and fairness to all, Governor Chukuma Saludo has directed a repeat of the recruitment examination for teachers in the state. Speaking to journalists, Senambra State Commissioner of Education, Professor Ngozi Chomaude, said the receipt examination will now take place on Saturday, 11th June 2022 at designated centers. Our education correspondent, Theophilus Ukoha, completes the report. Commissioner Chuma Ude said, in line with the state government determination to fill the gap of teachers in the state education sector, reposition and enhance the quality of teaching and learning, qualified teachers are to be re recruited. Hence, the online recruitment examination held last week. Uh, on the day of the exam, I came naturally the way I do my exams. I came with the exam uh, questions on the morning of the examination and uh, we uploaded. The upload uh, was completed exactly on the in five minutes to the exam, and uh, the exam started. 35 minutes into the examination, the hosting company started flashing cyber attacks. 
from that 35 minutes to 50 minutes when they eventually shot their uh, server, they had over 74 cyber attacks. That is uh, people trying to hack the, uh, the platform. So at the end of it all, some people were logged out, some started, they could not finish. Then there were also others who complained genuinely about um, a network. The people in the River Rhine areas, you know, there were multiplicities of complaints. So we decided to take our records to the governor. Commissioner Uday said the purported mix-ups arising from the online examination site were not intended, rather was as a result of cyber interference from fraudulent individuals who planned to manipulate the exercise. She, however, said the state governor has no choice candidate as everyone qualified will be given equal opportunity to retake the examination come Saturday 11th June 2022 at different designated centers being that the last exam was cancelled. The commissioner therefore assures the Anambra that their interests will be protected at all times. Today we are starting the journey afresh. I have invited the CBT um, owners to a meeting. After this interview now, I will hold a meeting with them, decide on the modalities for the exam and then maybe by Saturday the exams will be redone again. This time around, it will be a CBT exam. So we are going to divide people into groups, tell them which center they will go to. So what they should naturally look out for is the center where they are scheduled to take the exam. So on the morning of that day, you pick your bags, get into the center, and take your exams. At the end of the exam, copy your score. Or uh, take, okay, phones are not allowed in, so copy your score. Theophilus Okoha reporting for ABS News. The father of Ibupe mourns or prophecies right of trending on some social media handles should be ignored, even though it has inadvertently addressed the unfortunate issues raised by our respected and most revered clergyman, the spiritual director of Adoration Ministries, Uke, Reverend Father Obima, popularly called Ibube Monso. A press release by the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor, Christian Aburine, said, Governor Saludo would not be distracted from delivering good governance to the good people of Anambra State. Professor Saludo at all times has respect for the clergy, the church, and indeed all men and women of God, and will not join issues with them. The governor further enjoins the good citizens of Anambra State to go about their lawful duties without fear of molestation, assuring that the security of their lives and property is the main priority of his government. Now, following distress calls from Oko and the Columbia communities recently, the Anambra State Police of Operatives, in collaboration with vigilante service officials, have rescued four kidnapped victims. Speaking to the press on behalf of the Anambra State Commissioner of Police, C.P. Echeng Echeng, the Command Police Public Relations Officer, DSP Tochuku Ikinga, said the victims were between the age bracket of 40 to and 60 years. The PPRO also said that the operatives arrested one Emeka Amobi who was suspected of complicity in the crime. Upon interrogation, according to DSP Ikinga, the suspect confessed to the crime and led the operatives to the gang hideout where the directives engaged the gangsters in shootout. The gang leader, Juan Chinedu Ajogo, was gunned down and five others, including their native doctor, were arrested for further interrogation and prosecution. Items recovered from the suspects include one SMG rifle, one Beretta pistol, two locally made revolver spray pistols, one dagger, one Biafra flag, two pairs of ESN uniforms, as well as one Acura SUV snatched from a reverend father in Obo last month, among other items.
And from the national scene, the federal government has set up a special technical committee with a view to ending the perennial rejections of Nigerian non-oil export products in Europe, the Americans, and other parts of the world. The chairman of the technical committee on export rejects the director, commodity and export uh, department of the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, Mr. Suleiman Adedayo Audu, said in Abuja that the committee would work hard to make recommendations on ending the rejection of Nigeria's products. He noted that the terms of reference of the committee were to identify reasons for the rejections and prefer solutions to them. The executive director of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, NEPC, Dr. Ezra Yakusak, on his part, said the committee had a five-week mandate to identify gaps and prefer solutions to the problem. Now, amid increasing calls for diversification of the economy, Nigeria's crude oil exports jumped to 5.6 trillion naira in the first quarter of 2022, reflecting nearly 200% increase when compared to the same period in 2021. The figures contained in the foreign trade report of the National Bureau of Statistics said Nigeria's total merchandise trade stood at 13 trillion in the first quarter of 2022 indicating an increase of 11.5% over the value recorded in the fourth quarter of 2021 and 65.41% higher when compared to the value recorded in the first quarter of 2021. The export trade in the quarter under review stood at 7.1 trillion, showing a rise of 23.1% over the value recorded in the preceding quarter, and also an increase of 137.9% over the corresponding period of the preceding year. On the foreign scene, the Lebanese military has arrested 64 people trying to sail from northern Lebanon in an attempt to get to Europe. According to an army statement, the would-be immigrant Lebanese, sorry, migrants, Lebanese Syrians and Palestinians were all detained on Tuesday and were being questioned except for one pregnant woman who was bleeding and was taken to the hospital. The migrants were apparently taken into custody before their boat was able to set sail. They were apprehended near the Sheikh Znad area a few kilometers from the northern city of Tripoli. The attempt came weeks after a boat carrying more than 60 migrants capsized on April 23 off the coast of Tripoli, Lebanon's second largest city and one of the country's poorest. Seven bodies were recovered in that disaster, with 47 people rescued and still some missing. Survivors at the time blamed the Lebanese Navy for causing the accident by ramming into the migrants' boat. On sports news, reigning African Games 100-meter and 100-meter hurdles champions Raymond Ekevo and Tobibo, Tobiloba Amusan have arrived in Mauritius for the 22nd African Athletics Championship, ASC, starting tomorrow. Both athletes arrived Saturday after competing at the Irene Sue, uh, Zewinska Memorial, a World Athletics Continental Go Tour meet in Poland. Ekevo will be holding, hoping to add the African Championship title to the African Games gold he won three years ago in Morocco, thereby returning Nigeria to the top of the podium 12 long years after Olusoji Fajuba won in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. The 23-year-old who ran 9.96 S to win the African Games gold in 2019 will also be hoping to run faster and break compatriot Shane Ogunkoya's 9.94S championship record set in Dakar, Senegal in 1998. Amosa, on her part, will be looking to successfully defend the title she won four years ago at the 21st edition of the championship in Asaba. Meanwhile, the home-based contingent were ex expected to depart Nigeria for Mauritius last night. 
And that's sports news. We conclude the news, but remember you can follow news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television Orca. Follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. And you can log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And the main news again, Saludo has directed repeat of online teachers' recruitment examination. Education Commissioner Choma Ode has announced date for repeat of online exam for teachers. Federal government has moved to end export rejection in Europe and other parts of the world. And on the foreign scene, Lebanese army has arrested 64 people trying to sail to Europe. And the special message once again, Governor Chuko Masaludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that's the news. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nonya Mokoye. Good morning and have a great day.